it's not easy to be a Christian. I don't know what you were told, but if you were told that it was easy and that his yoke is easy and his burden is light, well, you might have been a little bit deceived because in the world you shall have tribulations. In the world you shall be tempted, you'll be tried, you'll be tested. In the world you will be an enemy of the God of this world. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Maybe when you were given a gospel message, you were told something about choose heaven over hell. God wants to bless you. God has a wonderful purpose for your life. That's true. But maybe you weren't told the rest of the story. You know, like on the radio, how you hear, oh, well, this and this happened. So you get the abbreviated. And in the end, guess what? They win. Oh, all right. But maybe you didn't know a few other things about the gospel message. You see, Jesus when he gave his message, told everyone, deny yourself. Whoa. Now, in the Middle East, maybe that wasn't so hard. But in the West, maybe that's a little harder to do. But Jesus didn't stop there. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Maybe it's time you had a reality check. Maybe you need to check out. Because when you checked in, you're not getting what you bargained for. Because somebody lied to you. Somebody said, it's all smooth sailing. It's already been done for you. You have to do nothing but accept what God has done for you. Just believe and you'll receive. Jesus paid a price for your salvation. He died. He separated himself in death from his father. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because, yes, Jesus was restored back to relationship with his father. Yes, Jesus did rise from the dead. Yes, Jesus is the Son of God and is God. But there was a moment when he became sin for you. So, it cost Jesus something. Your salvation is not assured if it costs you nothing. Because Jesus said, this is important for you to get a handle on. He said, look, in as much as they've done it to me, they're going to do it to you. If they have cast down and crucified the master, what will they do to the servants? I will not leave you comfortless, but I will give you another comforter because you will need him. And when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. He will speak not of himself, but he will speak of me. But you should rejoice because I go to my Father. But I know you're in sorrow now for you are left without me. But it's better that I go. Jesus said things that most people today don't pay much attention to. Because, you see, we go to a pew, we sit down, we listen to the thousands rejoice and lift their hands, and we go, oh yeah, come Lord Jesus, we've done everything you told us to do, haven't we? We 
listen to what the pastor said. We attended church every Sunday morning. We tithe our 10%. We gave like we wanted to. The missionary came and said, hey, you know, we're helping out people. Here, take the money and run. I love my wife, second and third. I love my children and the stepchildren and the half children and the ones that, oh, yeah, those two. I'm not perfect, but I do my best. Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. What Jesus said was a direct confrontation with the reality of who you are. He made it a determination based upon a personal relationship with him because on the Sermon on the Mount, he didn't just say, I have a good idea. I have this religious theme that I want you to be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. So. I'm going to give you a set of criteria you can never meet unless I'm inside you and I do it for you. But you can't do it at all. No, 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 no. You can't even try to do it. You know, no, oh, no, 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 no. Because then it's a work strip. But no, you can't do it. Because, you see, it's just my sermon. It's not really something I want you to do. Or is it? Did Jesus say at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, here's what I'll like in a man who does these things I have said. He will be likened unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when the storms of life came, his house stood because it was founded upon these sayings of mine. They did what I told them to do. They were faithful in what I said. But here's what happens to those who don't do what I said. Here's what I will liken a man unto him who doesn't do the things that I have just said to do. Love your neighbor. Turn the other cheek. Blessed are those. You know them all. The Beatitudes that you don't want to do, but rather say they're an idea we reach for to try to maybe someday, you know, work it out in the sweet by and by. Because they're for the kingdom. They're not for now. We don't turn the other cheek. We have to assert our independence and our responsibility to protect ourselves. We have to take up the sword, the gun. Exercise our amendment rights. Never mind what Jesus said. Never mind that he said, but if you don't do these things, I said, here's what your house is like. You see the sand? And a man decides to build a house upon it. And the storms of life come. The tornadoes, the hurricanes, the floods. Oh, we may wait five years or ten. But, but, did he do what I said to do? No, he didn't. Because had he, his house would not have failed or fallen. So, Lord, Lord, you want us to do the things you said to do? You want us to be turning the other cheek? You want us to act like you acted? Say the things you said? Do the things you did? But Lord, that's going to cost us. That's going to make us look like some kind of religious fanatic. We're going to look like some kind of cult. Come ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For when I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. Enter into your rest. So, I guess the question I have for you is, 
Did you buy a bill of goods when you got saved? Did you did you get this idea that you know your life was your own? That you could do whatever you wanted to do? That God wanted you to be the best you you could be? Because God does have a plan for your life, but it's not your plan. God's plan for your life probably doesn't have a whole lot to do with you except for you to give up your will, your rights, and your self. That it would no longer be your will that His will be done. I don't like to tell you this, but if you receive the gospel message in any other way, that you weren't told that there is a part you must do, that it's not just kick back and receive and take in without ever putting out. You got sold a bill of goods, you know? It's not just a bless me club, and God never meant it to be. Because you see, the first century Christians and the 21st century Christians died and do die that they might live. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become good. But if any man will come after me, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Your cross is custom made for you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what you need to do. I don't know if you were lied to in the salvation message. I don't know if you were told the four spiritual laws and there's a gap between you and God and, and somehow this gap now is filled with going to church and doing a religious thing. I don't know that. I don't know if, you know, Going to church is a bad thing. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you are hearing God speak to you personally. That you're taking whatever the pastor said and you're thinking about it and you're going home and you're looking at your Bible and you're saying, you know, that pastor was talking to me and he was telling me about, like in, in Proverbs, you know, or in Psalms, that my soul cleaves unto the dust and quicken thou me according to thy word. In other words, I have declared my ways and thou hast heard heard me and taught me your statutes, that you told me what you want me to do. Make me to understand the way of your statutes so that I will talk of thy wondrous works. Wow! I'm taking the word of God that God spoke to me, and I can read it, and I can make it real in my life, and I can say that these are the things that God has done in my life. They become the word of God living in me, that I know that God is alive, and I know that Jesus is real, and I know he's inside my heart. Because he lives inside me and he talks to me and he walks with me and he's told me these things and I've checked them out in his word. I've looked at it and I said, wow, look at what's in here. Look at how real it's become. It's the word of God. It's my guide. It's my life. It's my all. And I have nothing more to say than what's here. Nothing more to do than what's in here. Nothing more to be than what God wants me to be in here. Or maybe you think that, oh, hey, you know what? Man, I like singing, so I think I'll be a Christian artist. <laughs> and I'll do it in Jesus' name. You know, I, I kind of like this, you know, pastor thing. You know, I th you know they, they get paid pretty good, so I think I'll be a pastor. So I'm going to go to Bible college, you know. I think I'll do that in Jesus' name. You know, I, I kind of like this whole uh, prophetess thing. You know, I think I'll be a prophetess and a prophet, you know, because, hey, you know, all I got to do is, you know, say that I am. And I'll do it in Jesus' name. You know, there's a lot done in Jesus' name. There's a lot out there in Jesus' name. There's a lot of people that go, oh, you know, the rapture's coming. We're all going home. In Jesus' name. 
I don't know what you've been told. I only know what Jesus said. And I hope you're learning to deny yourself, to take up your cross and to follow him and not to follow men. Because there's a thousand ways to present the gospel, but it still involves one thing. You are going to die. This body of flesh is going to perish. You don't get a free ride into heaven with your sinful flesh. You have to deny yourself. You have to crawl up on a cross, literally, in your mind and crucify your own desires, your own wants, your own selfishness, your own sinful flesh that you are. And you are. Because if you're a Christian, if you're from the world and you were born of the flesh, then in that flesh, you are sinful. But if you're born again of the Spirit of God, if you're born again of the Spirit, if that Spirit has come down from heaven and lives inside you, not some feeling, not some anointing that came upon you, and now it's kind of like, wow, you know, well, where did it go? You know, I'm running with it, but you know, I just don't seem to be changing my lifestyle any. You know, I'm still sinning. If you're born of that Spirit that has come down and lives inside you, then you are agonizing at times in the Garden of Gethsemane over your life, that you are wanting better for your witness of what your life is to the world. That if you failed in marriage, if you failed in religion, if you failed in your church, if you failed in your job, if you failed 70 times, you still come back to God and you say, God, I want you and nothing more. Because until you want him, and nothing less. You're not a Christian. You're not born again. Because without a personal relationship, without a dynamic, ongoing God in your life, without Him uh, working on you, you got sold a bill of goods. You just cruising through and you're losing your salvation because you might not have had it in the first place. So what do you do? What can you do when somebody lied to you? When somebody made up this, oh, well, all I had to do was call on the name of the Lord and I'd be saved. Lord! Truthfully, you get back to the beginning. You ask God prayerfully in whatever way you want to to show you, to let you know today where you are in His plan of salvation. Because it could be, maybe you were sold a bill of goods, but by his grace and mercy, he saved you anyways. That he used whatever confusing ideas that were out there, he brought you to himself. And he said, oh, let me hold you. Let me hide you under the shadow of my wings. Let me help you in time of trouble. Let me bring to you my strength in need. Let me give to you my Holy Spirit that you might walk with me, that you might talk with me, that you might know me in the most personal and intimate way that you've ever known any other person today. You might be one of those who has heard Jesus speak because his sheep hear his voice and they know him and they will not follow the voice of another. Maybe you know Jesus. I hope so. Because if you know anything less than Jesus, you're not born again. That's scary.
must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him into your life. Ask him to be in control of your life. Give him the ability to enter into your life, to fill your life, to fill you with his love, with his mercy, with his kindness, with his forgiveness, with his spirit, and let him have you just as you are. Some people say you have to admit you're a sinner. You already know you are. Some people say you have to, oh, you know, confess these things and profess them before man and do all these wonderful things. No, you don't. You need to talk to God in a personal, intimate way. You need to talk to him like I'm talking to you today. You need to know in your heart and go after it with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, with all you got and get mad about it. Get real about it. You need to find out if God is real and you were saved. Because if you'll stand for anything less than that, you're not saved. You need to go after God as a deer pants for the water. You need to know Jesus in that way. That the passion that you have inside cries out for the living God. It's your salvation you're talking about. It's heaven or hell. How dare we leave it in any other condition than to know that we know because he lives inside us. And if you don't know, make it real. Ask, seek, find, do it. How dare you risk eternity for any other reason than to know the love, the humility, the tenderness, the filling of His Spirit in you, <laughs> would you dare risk spending eternity without Him based upon what man has told you? Or would you do something else for me? Would you do something else for yourself? Would you not read for yourself the Bible? Would you not ask yourself what Jesus said? Would you not take the time to prove God to yourself? It's not a question of just simply faith and I believe and, oh, I may never feel it, so, you know, I can't go by feelings. Every person that ever called upon the name of the Lord was saved. Every person that ever asked God into their life, they were not, they were not denied. But when God came into their life, God asked them, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. They were Christians that he spoke to. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and I will be as real to him as sitting down and eating dinner with. If God isn't that real, make it. Don't fake it. Don't be like those who choose to pretend based upon some feeling they have that they are saved because they've got a mass kosis of experiential knowledge that they feel the empathy they entice themselves with that emotion that comes from the crowds that in a rock star concert you have the same effect how dare we place a personal relationship with Jesus in any other lesser place than where it was meant to be you and God. It's not about going to church. It's not about being a Christian. It's not about a religion. It's about one thing and one thing only. 
Jesus in you. I can't help you. I can pray for you. I could say, oh, come to me and I'll lay hands on you. I'll pray for you, brother. But until you develop, until you ask, until you walk with God in a personal way, you will not know if you really are saved. You will not have an assurance of salvation unless you make it personal to you alone. You can't bring your wife in on this one. I'm sorry. And wife, you can't bring your husband in on this one. It ain't going to work that way. You can bring God in on this one. Because he loves you. Because your father wants you to know his son. Because he said, hey, this is my son. This is my beloved son. This is my only begotten son. Listen to him. Listen to what he has to say. Do the things he says you should do and you will know me because he reveals me. Imagine the day come if a person does stand before Jesus and he says, I never knew you. Oh my God. How great a tragedy. How great a travesty of grace and mercy that God would have extended before that day happened. That we should have made our confidence and our salvation assured that we have this faith in God that does cause us to rest assured in what He has done because He's come to us as His Son. One on one. I can never give a greater message than that. Ask God's sake right now. If you don't know Jesus or you don't know if you're saved, ask God save me. Seek. Go somewhere. Do it. Look. Find. Seek it in his word. Read it in the Bible. Read it wherever you want to. Read it on billboards. I don't care. Make it real. Because God will meet you. God wants to meet you. God wants to save you from where you're at. To show you where to go. To teach you what to do. He wants you to know Him. It's not about making yourself clean. Oh, I'm so perfect. God forbid that you should choose a righteousness that has anything to do with outer relationship with God. That's disgusting. Because the righteousness of those you look around whether they be in a Mormon church or some other idea of righteousness like Orthodox Jews or whoever you think is righteous or whatever you think of as your standard of perfection are as filthy rags before God who loves you, who wants you, who desires for you to come to a conclusion you may not understand right away. <laughs> But the first time God our Father loves you, and you know it, you won't doubt your salvation. You'll have the realization of Jesus in your life. So what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and follow me. And following Jesus means finding out who he is, what he is, where he is, and walking with him day by day, step by step, getting closer and closer to him so that you know him in the most intimate and personal way available. So that you come face to face with God. And God comes face to face with you. Until you do that. Until you know God in a personal way. Until you have that Holy Spirit confirmed in you. Full of the joy 
the love and the peace that passes all understanding that can take you to a cross and leave you hanging there and you die that Spirit of God will resurrect you and he will create in you the life of Jesus the person of Jesus Jesus himself living in you if you would call upon him today.